You're building a hotel? Yes, also. <laughs> Why are you building a hotel? Cote d'Ivoire is, is a touristic place. And I was going to a cinema fair. We're going yeah. to see, you're going to see which is a coast city. And there, hotel are beautiful and everything. But when I asked, who that hotel belongs to? It belongs to a Western people. Who that hotel belongs to? It belongs to Lebanese. Who that hotel belongs to? So few Ivorians were having hotels in those places. So I told, my, I, I, I told, I, I told myself, it's time to grab what belongs to us. So I told myself, let's be the hotel as, as well. Because there is a lot a of... A round of applause, hotel. a round of applause, a round of applause. <laughs> My name is Jean-Yves Bragbo. I'm an entrepreneur and investor here in Côte d'Ivoire. I'm running five different businesses. The most one is in transportation, as you can see and all the people behind me are employed in that transportation business. I left the diaspora one year and a half ago to come to Côte d'Ivoire to impact the society here. I'm also running a channel to share my, my investment here for everyone who is interested in. The name is The African Investor, in French, L'Investisseur Africain. My goal across Africa is to celebrate African excellence. My goal across Africa is to bring you successful Africans like John. I mean, John is my good friend, so that his story or their story will inspire you to go out there and be great. It's about time Africans start investing in Africa. Exactly. This is the right time Africans invest in Africa. I'm so glad that you are investing in Africa. Thank you, man. <laughs> See, I told him to come back to Africa. He told me, no, oh. I, I love Dubai so much. Yes. And even the last time you came to Ghana. Actually, the last time I came to Ghana, yeah. I was planning to come back to Africa. And Ghana was part of the country I wanted to come back to. So then I was still hesitating. You know, you're in Dubai, good job, nice salary. The family was happy there. So I was still hesitating, so I was trying to find a place where I can sp still speak English <laughs> to come back here. And then finally, I just decided to come. I took the risk. You told me that Ghana is so expensive for you. Oh, yeah, you. of course. Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> tell them the truth. <laughs> tell them the truth. He said Ghana was so expensive, so he decided to come back to Ivory Coast. Exactly. And I'm so glad that um, you made it back to your country. And I, I, I was hesitating between Rwanda, Ghana and Ivory Coast, to be honest. So I chose Ivory Coast because I think, yeah, I know a lot of people here. I know the environment. I know how to invest here and I already started investing here. But then the message I wanted to share, most people in the diaspora, when they, are, they want to come back to Africa, they only think about the country. You see, Ghanaian living in the US, when they want to come to Africa, they only think about Ghana. Mm. So I wanted to share another message. Let's see me, I'm from Cote d'Ivoire and I go, I stay in Rwanda. Okay. You see, it's, that's still Africa. So most of the time you can have like some problem in some country and people living abroad that we say we cannot go back to our country because there are this problem, that problem. We have 54 countries in yeah. Africa, even 55. So just pick one that is good. Ivory Coast is a very good one to come and stay in Africa. How so, long have you been back? Uh, one year and a half. And what I have see. you invested in your country so far? Wow, so many things already, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so many things. In, in, in one and a half In years. one and a half year. So many things. So the first investment that I've done is transportation. Okay, I've been doing it. The thing is, when I was living in the diaspora, I was investing already in Africa. So I started having like few taxis, five, ten, and then I came back to expand it. Wow. So when I came back, bought like 50 taxis, all the 200 ones that will come soon to be able to employ more people. No, wait, wait. You ordered 200 cars? Oh, 200 cars, yes. These are the cars that we see <laughs> next to us? Yeah, these cars, these cars. 200. 200 and then they are coming uh, part by part. The good part is when I was uh, starting the investment, I showed to the, my community the investment I was doing and some people from the diaspora, they came, they said, yeah, let's invest together, we want to invest with you. Mm. Because you know, most of the time when they invest here, there are so many scams and everything. So people came with me mm. to buy the 200 cars. So you are you not see, alone? I'm not alone in the, for the 200 cars. Different. But, 
people. It's going to be different people being together and we're going to share the company. It's going to be like a massive company that we're going to put in place. But for this one, I started it and then more people will come and we're going to buy more cars. If you've invested in 200 cars, yes. I mean, these are not ordinary taxis that no, 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 no. This is more like an app. This, this is an app. Right now we're using two different apps, which is Uber and Yango. No, dinner is an app like someone wants to a taxi, you just order the, the taxi, the taxi comes, you pick the taxi and go. So we are building our own app because 200 cars, man, it's better to have our, our, exactly. own, our own app. So we're going exactly. to have our own taxis app to be able to... So I guess if you have 50 cars, then which yes. means you've employed 50 people? No, because one car is driven by two drivers. So we employ right now 100 different people. One driver drives during the day and the other one during the night. So that's for how we make <laughs> so a with, lot of profit. So which is with 200 cars? So, so with 200 cars, it's going to be 400 drivers. But that's not the, the, that's, that's not the hand. The, the, the most important part is like one family here is composed with four different people or five different people. So 400 people, 400 drivers is a family of like 2,000 people. All so right. with that business right. only, we're going to be able to feed 2,000 people. And that was my goal when I was coming back to Africa. Because in Dubai, I was having a good job and everything, but I was, I was, not, I was not meaningful. You see, I was only in one company doing small changes in that company. And then I come to Africa with only one business able to employ 400 people and uh, feed 2,000 people. I think that's great. And that's why I'm telling to people, come back to Africa. Because here, man, we have more impacts. You know, we can impact more lives. We can impact more people. We can give dignity to our families. That's, that's my goal right now. That, that is the most important thing. That's the most important thing. To impact thing for me. in a society. Let's go back a little bit. Okay. Were you born in Ivory Coast? Yes, I was born here 37 years ago. So I stayed here till my 17. And then after 17 years old, I went abroad to study. So first I went to Morocco, Ooh. where I studied um, statistics and informatics. I was supposed to go to France, but back then I didn't want to go to Europe. That was not my dream at all. Wow. So I needed another African place where I could learn and study. And Morocco was part of it, so I just like, I didn't know the culture there. Okay. You know, most of the time we say Northern Africa is not really Africa. Yeah. So I went there to study, but at the same time to discover the culture there. So I stayed, I, I, I stayed there for five years. Five years. And after that, I went to France to study artificial intelligence. That, wow. that was the main reason wow. why I went there. Wow. So even there, after my school, I was like, I want to come back to Africa. And the year I got graduated, when I finished it, I was supposed to come. And that was the same year we have some trouble in Cote d'Ivoire, where we had like two different presidents. You know, we have like one former president that said he won the election. The new one also said he won the election. Those, there was some Civil trouble. Uh, civ not that much, but <laughs> yeah. So then I couldn't come back. So I thought myself, let me stay in France and get some experience. So I stayed in France for seven years. It was supposed to be two years only for experience. Really? And I stayed for seven years. So, so what were you doing in, in France like for that seven years? Were you working? Yeah, I was working. I was working because I, Thankfully, uh, I got like a nice degree. So French people, they wanted to employ me. AI I would love engineer. to say that, yeah, I would AI love to engineer. say I was like a security hey, guard. What, 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 what do you mean by a nice degree? <laughs> <laughs> but nice, I mean, I was like, I was having like an AI degree. AI so degree, good. I was, I was there, I was having a nice, uh, a Sorry. nice life, a nice time. Mm. And the thing is, I was terrible in, in uh, personal finance. So I was spending a lot of money. You know, you are young, coming from a poor background, because I'm coming from a poor background. You know, the only thing that took me for the, from the poverty is studying in school. When I say poverty is a kind of poverty, we didn't even have food sometimes. Wow. And they were like shutting, shutting off the, uh, the, the electricity on us in the apartment, in the thing. Because my dad, how, like, Adia. How, how long did they shut <laughs> electricity on you? Uh, uh, like for, for weeks. Sometimes. Then, then, then no, okay. Weeks. Okay, my for mom weeks. can testify that for us, we had no electricity for one complete year. One complete year? A whole so complete year. I was not year. poor. <laughs> <laughs> the same way as you. So when you made money, you wanted to live the life that you exactly. never got the chance exactly. to enjoy. Got it. I never so got the chance. So then I was traveling, I was buying everything. Yeah, I hope you didn't <laughs> spend money on women. 
Oh, uh, thankfully I was, going, I was going to church back then. Ah. <laughs> Not even now. But yeah, let's say I was going to church, so like I was kind of, I was kind of having like a yes, okay. yeah, impressive. But you're just spending. Yeah, on I was spending. Yeah, I was, I was spending on myself, and then I was also trying to invest in Africa. So I was sending money to build house. I got like scammed. I sent like fifteen thousand euros to be to build house here for my grandmother. My aunt just <laughs> vanished with the money. Wow. And my first business, my first, this is not my first transportation business. I started in Gabon. I invested 30,000 euros in Gabon in 2012. I failed, <laughs> totally completely failed because I was new in the business and people scared me, like, scammed me like crazy. So at the end, when I left Paris in 2016, I, I was having a debt of 60,000 euros. When you were leaving? Yeah, when I was leaving, 60,000 euros I ended up with. So, but in the first place, why did you leave? Paris uh, but at some point, you know, you are in Paris. You, I was not feeling, I was not having mean, meaning in my life yeah. in Paris. You yeah. know, so I was trying to find a place where I could go. Yeah. So I was thinking about Africa, but then my wife wanted to discover another place. She's like, mm. yeah, let's go to Dubai. Let's see how it is and everything. So I gave her a chance and we went to Dubai. I, w I, I, I was not a big fan of Dubai. To be honest, I'm like, everything is artificial, everything is already developed and everything. But then I just followed my wife. <laughs> when I say it to people, they're like, ah, you followed your wife and everything. Yes, I followed her and had to support her in a new job. Yeah. So this is how we ended up in Dubai. How long did you guys stay in Dubai? We stayed in Dubai for five years. What were you doing in Dubai? So in Dubai, I went there, I was doing the same job, thankfully, because it's also a very demanding job there. So I was getting also in kind of nice salary there. Because, very, <laughs> because very of the nice job. Salary. Very nice I, gu I guess it was nicer than Paris. <laughs> of course, it was nicer than Paris. That, you know, Dubai, they're crazy. They paid a very, very, wow. very good salary there. So I started in Dubai. And then in Dubai, I was kind of alone there because I didn't know anyone. When I went to Dubai, I was only speaking French. Not a single word of English. Really? Only French. I could, I could say bonjour, bonsoir, comment ça va? Like you in English right now. <laughs> Bonjour, bonsoir, ça va? So I was only able to do that. So my, in, my first job in TV was crazy. I went there, I went with a book like this. And then any time the, the interviewer was asking me a question, I was like, look, this, this is, look that, this is it, this is it. So this is how I got my first job. It was very well paid. I think in a year I was getting like $140,000 yearly. So, that's, that's like yes. monthly $10,000. <laughs> yeah, monthly $10,000 almost. Wow. With that money that you're making in Dubai, I mean, if I were you, yeah. I would never come back to Africa. So many people told me, you are a foolish man when I was telling them <laughs> I was coming back to Dubai. <laughs> Even my family, they were saying, if you come back to, uh, to Cote d'Ivoire, if you come back to Africa, we'll not go to the airport to welcome you. Wow. Are you mad? Why would you come to Africa? This complicated place. You have, uh, you have everything in Dubai. I was having a nice life, very good salary. Everything was fine. Even my boss told me, he was like a Turkish man. He said, why would you go to Africa? There's nothing there. Uh, you stay in Dubai here, you make money and halas. But then, you know, at some point I was living in Dubai, my heart was in Africa. You know, Africa was really calling me. You know, uh, it reached a point where I was living there, my body was there, but my spirit, my soul, everything was here. You know, and that, that there was one event that even changed everything. What was that? And decided me to come. So I have two sons. The first one is five years old right now, the second is three. So my son is going to school in Dubai, and most of the time he's the only black people in the class. So he used to say, I'm the only brown, I'm the only brown. So one day my son was playing at the yard um, in, the, in the park, and I was going back to take him. So when I was going on my way to take him, I saw like different kids around, you know, they, they made a circle, and there was one kid in the middle. Hmm. And then the, the kid was saying like, yeah, do it, do it, do it. And then when I came, I saw my son, in the middle of this, hmm. doing the monkey sign. Like, hoo, hoo, ha, ha. And all wow. the kids around were like white or Arabs. So I saw it. My kid, you know, he was a child back then. He was like only three and a half years old. So the other kids, a, a little bit bigger, they, ha they were asking him to do the monkey sign. And he was doing it and they were laughing. Wow. So I saw it, I literally it broke, went, heart, I broke my heart. I'm like, I don't want my son to live and think that he's part of a minority. And most of the time in the diaspora, this is what happened. 
we are the minority, so people think that we've, we're part of the minority. So when I saw that, I just came back home. I, I told my wife, pack your stuff, we live in Dubai. And that's how you ended up? <laughs> this is what I ended up at. In Ivory Coast. In Ivory Coast. Now I want to welcome you. Bienvenue, Ivory Coast. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. You're, you're back home now? Yes. Are you living or you're surviving? Uh, what is the difference for you? <laughs> I mean, living your best life and surviving is like trying to go to work, get money, come back, spend on your family and oh, that's okay. No, 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 no. I was not thinking about surviving when I was coming back to Africa. You know, I was not coming back to Africa to be an employee, you know. And this is what I keep telling to people. Don't live in the diaspora and plan to come to Africa to be an employee. You come to Africa to be an employer, to so someone who employs people. So I knew it from the very first day. Because, you know, with my degree, with the salary I was earning there, if I come here, of course, they're going to give me like shit salary. Exactly. <laughs> I that. So I was not planning to come and survive here. So when I came, I had a plan to build all those businesses. So I came and then I'm just running those businesses. I'm working on those businesses. And I can say I'm living my best life, not because of money, but because I found meaning in what life. I'm doing, mm. to life. You know, I found meaning to life. I'm, every day I wake up at 6, 5 a.m. I sleep like around 10 p.m. sometimes. But I'm happy of what I'm doing. You know, because you see, you see the guys, they're, yeah, happy. they're happy. We came here, we give them jobs. This is all they want, you know. Sometimes they work for other communities. They, they are not well treated by them. Mm. So, so my goal was to come here, find jobs, give them like very nice workspace when they can be happy. And they're really happy, the people working with me, they're super happy because I'm putting so many things in place for them. So that make them, that make me feel very proud and happy. I always tell the diaspora something. Yes. Africa got a lot of challenges. Africa got a lot of problems. Mm. Come to Africa, find our problem, bring solution and become a billionaire. A billionaire. That's what I'm doing right now. You, there are so you, many problems here. There are so many problems. And the thing is in West, Every problem I've been solved already. Man, I was in France, you know, I, was, I, was, I wanted to, to build a business. I was thinking, what business I'm going to launch? Finding problem was, <laughs> was not easy. Dubai, same, man, they built Dubai like crazy in few, a in few years. But then I come here in, in Africa, man, I have 100 ideas of business because there are so many problems and everything has to be built. That's the thing, you know? So um, you said it and I really liked it. Guys, come to Africa, grab. You know, this is how it lands. You know, it belongs to us. So you come, you see a problem, you find the solution, and game. You I, get the money. I, I wish <laughs> Africans can start grabbing Africa the way they grab their wives, <laughs> their girlfriends, their exactly. side chicks. Mm. This is how you're supposed to grab Africa. I, I love the fact that you're employing women. Yes, this oh, is wow. <laughs> Bonsoir, <laughs> ah, hey, bonjour. Bonjour. Ah, comment ça va? Ah, je, ça suis, va? je suis malade. Oh, oh, you know, my lad. Oh, my lad like, yeah, oh no, no, no. <laughs> my lad is sick. Okay. You see her? Just you happy? Suis, no, I'm just suis happy. Yeah. Okay, je suis uh, content. Just suis happy to see you. Okay. Yeah. Il est très content de te voir. And we have like five women right now. The other one are working. Why right you employ women? Because we want to give women chance also. And then you're going to see women are the best drivers. <laughs> they are very careful. If I open her car, her car is very clean. So when Let, customers... Let's check it out. <laughs> yeah, you let's can check, check it out. It. Open the car, you're going to see. Look. Okay, I think some oh, wow. people went there, but then you see she see, has like yeah. tissues, she has wow. the perfume. You cannot feel the no, perfume. No, you, you, can, you can't even smell the perfume. <laughs> yeah, you cannot smell ah, the perfume. Ah, Messi, so me, then, uh, Messi sabon, Bicu. sabon. No, 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 no. Sabon. <laughs> like, how do you say? That, that, that's very good. Yeah, yeah c'est très bien. C'est bon. Oh, c'est très bien. I hope bien. we're going to have like one language for all African very soon. I, I just hope so too. English and French, I, I, man, I think, yeah. I think it, 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 it was the plan of the colonizers. Exactly, exactly. I live in Ghana. People from Ivory Coast, Benin, Burkina Faso, they all speak French. So I can't communicate with them. Yeah. And then you have Cote d'Ivoire and you have Liberia and Sierra Leone also. That <laughs> part. So, so we cannot really communicate with them. Thankfully, we have Mali and Burkina. So it was made in on purpose. So we have to be beyond those barriers. That's why I, I, I really like you. I really admire you. Because, man, you don't care about boundaries and borders. You nah. go anywhere. <laughs> That's very For good. me, Africa is home for Africans. Exactly. Yeah. Whether you speak different language, I'll come to your country. <laughs> Even if I don't understand, <laughs> I'll do sign language. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what are the kind of opportunities do you think it's here in Ivory Coast that you think people need to invest in? Okay. So, the thing is, 
all sectors here are opportunities. Wow. Yeah, that's one thing. I don't like saying to people, do this, do that. Because you come, you find a problem. And if you really care about that problem, you're going to get money. You see, I came, I saw the problem in transportation. I'm like, we are almost 5 million people in Cote d'Ivoire, mm. in, in Abidjan. In mm. Abidjan mm. And we only have like seven to 800 cars for 5 million people. I'm like, man, there is something we have to do. So for me, Cote d'Ivoire right now is a land of opportunities. Wow. There are so many opportunities and wow. the government is working also wow. to bring more entrepreneurs. Wow. So of course, the first wow. thing will be real estate. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, but I, I want to know if the business you're doing right now yes. is profitable. Of course, man. This transportation is one of the best profitable business here. That's why I started with, with this business. I'm having other business also, I will, I, will, I will let you know. So the good thing is, you buy a car, uh -huh. and from the very first day, your car starts generating money. With 50 cars right now, we're generating almost $50,000 per month, which is $600 per year. And then after 18 months only, we, I get all the money back. After 18 months. So then, instead of taking the money and building a house, an apartment, a villa, I told myself, let me buy cars. Let me start employing people. And then with that money, I'm going it's to build the hotel, one. I'm going to build the house, the house, I'm going to build everything. So with one money, I can do several business. And the thing is, after 18 months, those cars will, will still, be, still running. be running. They will still bring money. So transportation is fast, it's quick, and you get money quickly. You're building a hotel? Yes, also. <laughs> Why are you building a hotel? Côte d'Ivoire is, is a touristic place. And I was going to a cinema fiel. We're going yeah. to see you're going to see which is a coastal city. And there, hotels are beautiful and everything. But when I asked, who that hotel belongs to? It belongs to a Western people. Who that hotel belongs to? It belongs to Lebanese. Who that hotel belongs to? So few Ivorians were having hotels in those places. So I told my I, I, I thought I, I told myself it's time to grab what belongs to us. So I told myself, let's be the hotel as, as well, because there is a lot a of... A round of applause, a round of applause, a round of applause, a round of applause. So, <laughs> that's how I was starting building the, the hotel. This is how I keep on telling Africans to take control exactly. of what belongs to them. You know, we need more Africans investing in Africa. It doesn't matter, even if you're from Ghana, I think I need to call upon um, a Gambian guy who built five um, resorts in... Um, Gambia to come Gambia to Ivory Coast yes. because I think we need Africans investing in different African countries. I mean, I, I, my own mentor, Taf, uh, invested in Nigeria and he's from the Gambia. Exactly. My first investment in transportation was in Gabon and I was from Cote d'Ivoire and people told me, why do you go and invest in Gabon? I said, this is still Africa. Thank you. I don't need to invest only in my country. Thank you. But then I failed. <laughs> 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 How many businesses have you done that you feel? Only, I think, is that No, I, I made five businesses I failed before. So I started investing from 2010 to 2016. It was only failures. Wow. Was only failure. My first business was selling um, drinks. So I was, the thing is I was living abroad and investing all those things. So, you know, doing business with your family and all yeah. this stuff, you know, that easy. So I was doing, uh, I was selling drinks. It failed after shoes. Be, uh, mini, uh, doing shoes also, yeah, selling it shoes. fails. Yeah, selling shoes is, it fails. My first transportation business where I invested like thirty thousand euros fails as well. I construction also. I wanted to construct uh, to to build a house for my grandmother. Fail. Failed completely, completely failed. I started farming, <laughs> so I did farming where I wanted to have like one uh, ten thousand uh, chicken something wow. like that. Failed. Failed. So in two thousand sixteen, I was like. Man, there is something. <laughs> so I was blaming, I was blaming, I was blaming my family, blaming the people I was working on from all those years. And at some time I sat and said, okay, what is the problem? It can't be only the other people. Maybe I'm the problem also. So then I find that because I was not good with money, my personal finances was like <laughs> a mess. So then I understood the problem was not the other people, but it was mainly me. And sometimes too, I always want to tell the diasporans, when you live abroad, and you send money for people to invest yes. for you, it doesn't work. Exactly. I don't want to talk about myself too much because this video is not about me. Oh. <laughs> but I also send money back home for my family to start up a business was when I lost my father in 2017. Believe me, when I came back home, there was not even a dollar waiting for me. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's... I have to calm myself and then start everything by my own self and look at where we are right now. So yeah, sometimes you need to come here and invest in your own business by yourself yeah. whilst you sit down and watch your business grow. Let, let, yeah, um, totally, I, I totally agree with you. And yeah. what I keep telling to people, like your family is not qualified to do the business. Most of the time, you know, when you want to invest here, you uh, when you live abroad and want to invest here, you want mm. to invest for, for your family. Exactly. And naturally, you said my family has to take care of the business. Mm. But the thing is, they are not qualified for the business. They don't know how to how to work with the money, how to uh, take care of all those things. So mm. when you bring give them money, and most of the time, man, sometimes they are suffering. Sometimes they need money and everything. Yeah. So I, I told people stop investing with your families. You stop, and I starting having like success in my businesses when i stopped working with my family it's sad to say but yes so now i'm doing everything in the structured way you know there is a structure we have like company de declared we pay taxes and everything so at least that's one give like a broad vision of yeah. a very good business instead of doing small business with family here and there you also invested in restaurant Yes, so we uh, I started investing in restaurants. And the good thing that I've done, most of the time when people want to invest in a business, they want to be on their own, you see? So they come here, they want to invest in restaurants, they say, let me build my restaurant. So me, uh, I think that union is strength. Yep. So I came back to Cote d'Ivoire. I wanted to open fast food. But I said, before opening a fast food, let me see if there is not someone else who does the same. So I found Olivia Agre. She's having like a very nice fast food, which is mm. called Dabali Express, mm. which is selling only Ivorian and African food. Mm. So I want to meet her. I say, let's part partner. Let, let's partner. Instead of me having my restaurant on my wow. own, you also on your own. Wow. Let's partner. I'm going to open a lot of franchise of your restaurant. I don't care about like me being the entrepreneur behind the idea and everything. Me, I just want to invest. employ, invest, invest money and employ. So we partnered recently, it went in the news and everything. So now I'm opening like three of the same, of the, the same restaurant they open. And this is what we should do. Most of the time, African, when they invest in Africa, they like like small business businesses on their own, small businesses on their own. Although uh, the, the, the Lebanese, the Chinese, the West, when they come, they build a big company. They put the money together to build a very big company. We have to start thinking big. Instead of us having small business yeah, on our own, let's have one big business that employ a lot of people. This, how, that's what happened with the car. I bought the, the first cars. Some other people came and said, let's create a company. And then instead of 200 cars, we're going to buy 2,000 cars to a lot of things. And then it's going to be big. You see, we have, right now I'm employing 110 people, the people are in the office for the transportation. But the restaurant also is going well. Mm. And then we're building them right now. In two, three months, it's going to be done. And you're also building an amusement park. Yeah, an amusement park. That's also one of uh, one, one sector really like lucrative and that bring money here. When I came back, my, my kids used to love water park. You know, in Dubai, it was going to water park every, every day almost. And then I came here, I was looking for water park. There was no water park, <laughs> you know. There were like very few amusement parks. And I this told myself, guy. let's do something here. This guy. <laughs> See, th this guy yeah. is actually proving my statement. Exactly. Come to Africa, identify the problem, solve it. And You're my brother, man. Man, yeah. You're my brother. <laughs> what has been the biggest challenge since you came back? And uh, it's not all rosy. Yeah, the biggest challenge is... I think because I was coming for, for business is to find the right people to work with. Wow. That was very, that was tough. You know, when you come, you expect a specific level of knowledge mm. and everything which mm. you don't meet uh, mm. on the ground. Mm. So that's why it took me more time. Mm. There was, I was supposed to roll up my, <laughs> my plan like in six months or one year maximum. But then I, I wanted to make sure that I was having the right person, the right people mm -hmm. around me. Yeah. So, you know, now thankfully I got few people and then everything is running well and that's the that's the biggest challenge and sometimes also the mentality sometimes yeah you know, you know when you come back people expect you to be giving money everywhere you know when they <laughs> see me oh come on you rich give us money, money i'm like i'm investing my money and literally i'm investing everything so yeah. sometimes i want to live like a simple life exactly and everything. Like people don't get it why would you come back from europe and live a simple life you don't you give have a money. Lot of money you don't give money so my family right now is a bit mad <laughs> at me but i'm like let me first build 
and after we can give the money. So those are the two challenges I met here. You regret coming back home? Absolutely no. Absolutely no. And I wish I did it before. Wow. Really, I wish I came back 10 Earlier. years ago. Oh. 10 years ago. Man, it's the right time right now. I think it was the right time also before. So I'm super proud. I'm super happy of coming back. Really, I don't regret anything. And some people even say, you have to come back to Dubai. I say, never. Last time I went to France to stay there for five days. Man, I was so sad. I just wanted to leave quickly. <laughs> so, you know, I was living in France, though, but I just yeah. wanted to leave quickly. So I see myself so in Africa. Even when I travel <laughs> outside of Africa, I don't feel good. Yeah. I really don't feel good. So if, I'm so happy. If you have a message to Africans, especially the Francophones living in the diaspora, what would that I have to say it in French then. <laughs> Please do. Please do. <laughs> I can say it in English later. French. Okay, let me say it in French. Uh, salut à tous ceux qui me regardent. Je suis la preuve vivante qu'on peut quitter la diaspora pour venir vivre ici en Afrique et faire des choses. Là-bas, regardez la vie que vous avez. Vous vous levez tous les matins à 4 du matin. Vous ne voyez pas le soleil. Vous dormez à 23 heures. Vous ne voyez pas le soleil. Vous n'avez pas de, de signification dans votre vie. J'ai envie de vous dire que l'Afrique est le présent. La, les gens disent l'Afrique c'est le futur, c'est le futur, mais c'est le présent. Ce n'est pas facile, il y a des difficultés, mais si on ne le fait pas, qui va le faire La plupart du temps, les gens se plaignent quand ils viennent en Afrique, il n'y a pas d'hôpitaux, il n'y a pas de système bancaire, on ne peut pas faire ci, l'école n'est pas bonne, il euh, y a tel problème. Mais qui va résoudre ces problèmes si ce n'est nous-mêmes On ne peut plus compter sur les Européens pour résoudre ces problèmes à notre place. On ne peut plus compter sur les Libanais, on doit commencer à compter sur nous-mêmes. Donc c'est avec vous que nous allons pouvoir le faire. Venez qu'on puisse investir ensemble, venez qu'on puisse vivre ensemble en Afrique. L'Afrique nous appartient, c'est à nous. Et c'est à nous de prendre possession de ce qui nous appartient. Sinon, vous savez ce qui va arriver Dans les prochaines années, nous serons des étrangers sur notre propre terre. We're going to be strangers on our land. Come now, this is the right time. Africa is not the future, Africa is the present. In, it, has, it has always been the same. So, Afrique, l'Afrique, c'est le présent et ça a toujours été le cas. Donc venez, moi ma chaîne c'est l'investisseur africain, passez, faites-y faites un tour, vous allez voir tous les investissements que je fais et ça va vraiment vous inspirer et je vous attends de l'autre côté. Africa is calling right now. Exactly. Don't, don't say that I did not tell you. <laughs> I'm telling you, come now, me, I'm not selfish. That's why I've taken it upon myself to go from different African countries just to let you know that it's possible to make exactly. it in Africa. Bring that money, bring that skill, come and invest here and become a billionaire. And when you become a billionaire, please give me some of your money. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> because, because I inspired you. Don't, don't just say, what am I inspired me to come? <laughs> Inspire me with money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want to thank you. You're no. doing a very great job. Um, you're not very, done. Very you're not job. done. You're okay. not done. If okay. you have a chance to change one thing in Africa, what will it be? Change one thing in Africa. What will it be? Poverty. Wow. Yeah, poverty. So people sometimes ask me, why do you do all those investments? My main goal is to get money to be able to help others. Wow. Man, when you drive in the city, you see some kids, they come to your car, they ask you for money. Man, I don't like it. You know, I'm, I'm not very proud of it. So when you see that, we're not going to count on the West End to come and fix it. So my goal is to create, it, to create orphanages mm -hmm. and all the stuff and mm -hmm. work on that, you know, sector. The money of the business, we just go there. Me, I don't need a lot of money to live. Yeah, a few money, I'm okay. Yeah, okay. So poverty, we need to change it because poverty can get you mad. <laughs> can get you mad. I've been there. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. And I know how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed this amazing episode. Please, first of all, like this video. He has a YouTube channel that he talks about investment in Côte d'Ivoire and Africa, in, Africa in, in general. general so, um, I mean, it's in French. So, if you are a Francophone watching this video, go and subscribe to that channel. But also, you, I mean, everyone can subscribe yeah. and support. I mean, it's all about seeing the videos. But what <laughs> but he's we're talking to about? Put English subtitles. Very, very soon. soon. Very soon. Very soon. I have to move here and come and learn French because I feel like the francophone audience need me because yes. I will always tell you guys the truth, and I want to tell you the truth that you can understand. <laughs> so via Ivory Coast, parler franc français. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's good. I, I was <laughs> almost there. Come again. Come again. <laughs>
Viens, viens, en viens en Côte d'Ivoire pour parler français. Pour parler français. Yes, good. C'est bon. But very soon, only one language. Huh? We're going to get rid of those. <laughs> I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. And please, don't forget to subscribe and be part of this awesome channel. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. Thank you, bye.